good morning po. Uh, this is Kelly and I will be discussing how uh, to topic for selecting research. Uh, in research, something is a word that refers to the method or process of selecting respondents or people to answer questions in and real data for a research. Tawag ba po ron, ito ginagamit natin na term para po sa mga individuals who are included or uh, answering the questions or the surveys for a uh, certain research study is something and that is the process. Okay. Now, uh, some introduction to something. We do have learning objectives. Uh, this is to describe the relationship between sample and population, both target and accessible in a research study and uh, explain the importance of obtaining representative as opposed to bias samples. Also, it is to explain the basic distinction between the probability sampling methods and non-probability sampling methods and recognize example of these two sampling techniques when they appear in research reports. Okay. Una daw, uh, we have to describe the uh, yung relevant to sample and to the population and also explain yung ano ba yung probabilities because we do have two types of uh, sampling techniques, the probability and non-probability. Now for the uh, population, it is the entire set of individuals of interest to a researcher. Although the entire population usually does not participate in a research study. The results from the study are general to the entire population. Meaning to say, nagay yung nakikita yung sa picture, uh, uh, example, uh, you are uh, targeting the population do sa mga naglalakad, yun. Okay. For a set or for a specific uh, location, yeah, yung population dyan, dyan ka kukuha ngayon ng sample. Okay? Sample, it is a set of individuals selected from a population and usually is intended to represent the population in a research study. Doon sa nakita natin population, doon tayo hugot ng sample. And kagaya ng sinabi natin kanina, the sample, it is the, uh, those are the individuals who are uh, included sila yung uh, sasagot ng mga tanong natin. Yung, like for example, we do have checklist, we do have a survey for um, our study. Sample ng tawag natin doon sa individuals natin uh, uh, binibigyan natin ng consent form. Yan. Sila yun. Yung pinupuntahan natin pa minsan pa nga sa, ano, sa mga kulungan. Sila yung mga sample na yun. Or or specific uh, group of people or specific group of students in the uh, school. Like for example, sa Aralyano, ganun. Uh, Magsiset tayo ng target ng sample lang natin for is, uh, sabihin natin undergrad. O, sa, 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 sino sino sa mga undergrad meron? Anong department? Yun. Yung population, undergrad. Then, who are the samples? Those are the individuals like for for example, Department of Psychology. Doon tayo kukuha ng samples. Okay? Now, uh, the re what is the relationship between the population and the sample? Okay? Number one, research begins with a general questions about a population. Yeah. It is a group of about whom you wish to gather data. Defined by person, place, and time. Now, the sa population na yun, we will select, or the sample is selected from the population. It is considered as a subgroup of total study of population. Now, the sample is also the specific set of individuals who participate in the research study. The actual research study is conducted with this sample. 
the results from the sample are generalized to population. Now, that, that is the reason why we just need to take a sample okay, from a group, from a population, total population. Kasi bakit? Uh, we do have this kind of reason na magiging excessive, uh, magiging, uh, uh, anong tawag dito, uh, yung sa cost efficiency, kumbaga. Ngayon, ang gagawin natin, yung sample na yun, once makita natin, merong effectivity or merong, meron tayong makita ng positive na result, we could come up to a generalized, uh, generalized decision or uh, uh, conclusive na result na pwede sa do sa population na pinakuhaan. Okay. Kasi nga, sinasabi nga natin dito, ang sample, it is usually intended to be ano, representative to a population. Kung, kung ang gagawin natin buong like for example, buong Arabiano, isa ito magastos yun. Ganun na kasi na yun. Or buong ano, buong Rizal. Ganun yun. Now, we just have to set and target a specific sample. Okay, what is the relationship among the target population, accessible population, and then the sample? Yan, yung sinasabi ko kanina, yung success, accessible. Hindi porke, kung nga rin, uh, nasa region 4 ka, tapos yung ha, gusto mo sa region 5, mas maganda na mag-study mo yung rele uh, may uh, relevance sa'yo and accessible dun sa uh, location mo. Now, why? Because the target population it is that entire set of individuals who have the characteristic required by, re by the researcher. Kasi dun sa population na yun, na kukuha tayong sample, yung, yung individuals na yun, yung mga population na yun, yun yung target mo na, uh, uh, na individuals na merong karakteristik doon sa, sa study mo. Okay, like for example, special uh, students with uh, learning disabilities, yun yung, uh, ano, yun yung target mo na population kasi nandun yung karakteristik na hinahanap mo, which is yung learning disabilities nila. Okay. Now, the accessible population, a portion of, it is the portion of the target population consisting of individuals who are accessible to be recruited as participants in the study. Nakita mo na nga yung, yung population na yun. Nakakuha ka na ng target population. Yun. Nakita mo na yung uh, characteristics. O, kumbaga. Ngayon, ang i-consider mo rin also yung accessibility ng ano, population or new target population mo. Okay? Kasi uh, para i-use hassle, kung baga, makita mo yung yung good relevance or correlation man yan. yan. Ngayon, pag naki, nakuha mo na yan, na-consider mo at meron ka nang makuha mo ganun, the sample, it is the individuals who are selected participate in the research study. Doon ka na. Doon ka na, kukuha ka na ron. Kukunwari ako, tagantipolo ko. Tapos target ko na na population ito yung mga special, ano, special uh, children. Uh, children with special needs. Okay? Eh, ang target ko naman na population, yung, ano, yung may mga learning disabilities. Kasi, like for example, meron tayong, uh, meron tayong knowledge, uh, sample ngayon ng nilabas ni DepEd meron yung about sa learning disabilities, DepEd order. Da, dun tayo. O yun, meron na tayong literature term. Okay, dun naman tayo. Yung target population natin is learning disabilities. Eh, meron na akong learning disabilities kaso sa ano, ang gusto ko sa, sa Manila pa. Accessible ba yun? Hindi. Kasi, from Antipolo sa sa Manila, papunta sa Manila, lalo ngayon sa pandemic yun, hindi siya, hindi siya practical, kumbaga. Mas maganda kung, kung ang target population mo sa, sa children with special needs, kukunin mo is yung learning disabilities. Nung pa lang, doon sa 
uh, area mo. Like for example, pwedeng San Tipolo lang, Division of San Tipolo, or uh, sa buong Rizal, pwede yun. Kasi, uh, Antipolo is part of Rizal. And bakit ko yung nasabi? Uh, usually, if quantitative yung kukunin mo na ano, na research study, kaya na marami kang ano, individuals. So, ito naman ang ano yan, kukonsigura mo. O sa division office of Antipolo lang, ay ganito lang karami lang ang um, um, uh, population or samples na makukuha mo para maging para maging uh, ang tag dito maging mataas yung 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 probability or ma maging mataas yung effectivity ng anong ano mo research study mo which is quantitative tapos kang konti sa result ka kaya pwede kang pumunta sa Montalban, San Mateo ang uno yan kukuha ka ngayon ng mga sample yan, na may mga learning disabilities. Hanggang sa mamit mo yung uh, target mo na numbers of individuals. Okay? Then also, do sa representative samples natin, uh, it refers to the extent to which the characteristic of the sample accurately reflect the characteristics of the population. We do have three. The representative sample, bias sample, selection bias, or sampling bias. Now, sa representative sample, it is a sample with the same characteristics as the population. Yung kagaya kanina, learning disabilities, same siya sa children with special needs. Yun yung population mo. Okay? Ang representative sample mo, yun yung by learning disabilities. Okay, by example, each sample with different characteristics from those of the population. Uh, yun, kunwari, ihalo mo si learning disabilities sa, like for example, sa mga regular students. Tama yung bias na. Tapos ang, ang kukunin mo yung, yung uh, IQ level nila. Siyempre, may bias yun. Iba yung, iba yung, uh, yung preference ni children with uh, special needs na learning disability, iba naman doon sa regular. Okay? Kasi syempre, uh, we have to consider the ability and capacity of the individual. Okay? Parang kagaya yan, ng pag, pagbibigay mo ng, parang kagaya ng pagbibigay mo na set of questions to sa FL learners, Tapos, same lang nung question sa yun, doon sa slow learner. May bias yun. Kasi iba yung, iba yung preference si FL or yung fast learner doon sa slow learner. Okay? Selection or sampling bias. And of course, when participants or subjects are selected in a manner that increases, increases the probability of obtaining a bias sample. And, ah, uh, it is the process of selecting participants uh, selecting participants uh, uh, na hindi siya pumunta do hindi siya pumunta do sa process yung proper process okay kasi when selecting participants we also need to consider yung uh, pagiging ano nila yung equal nila like uh, having a cost ko yung parang ganun Mamaya pag-aaraman natin yan. Okay? Doon sa sam sample size naman, the main goal is to obtain a sample that is representative of the population. Yan, kagaya yan sa feed, sa makikita nyo. Uh, Doon sa population, siyempre magsaselect lang tayo ng uh, specific numbers of participants, specific number of samples, to become representative of the population na maging target natin. Okay, factors influencing the sample size of research study. We do have the law of large numbers. Okay, uh, it says that the larger the sample size, the more likely it is that values obtained from the sample are similar, 
similar to the actual values for the population. Yan yung sinasabi ko kanina. Uh, especially if you are using a quantitative uh, research study, uh, mas maganda, the bigger the sample is, the more art accurately it represents the population. Kasi siyempre, tinitignan mo nga yung accuracy mo. Eh. Ngayon, kung doon ka lang sa division office na ito, tapos konti lang yung participants ko ron, uh, it is uh, more likely na hindi mo ma-obtain yung accuracy kasi konti lang naman yung participants mo. Ngayon, ang gagawin mo, uh, kung hindi kaya doon sa, organiz sa organization mo, pwede doon sa inter-organization na uh, simply nag, uh, nagpapakita siya ng uh, characteristic ng population mo. Okay? Tapos kung kakukuha ng sample. Then also, we do have the research ethics sa uh, dito sa sample size. If a sample is too large, then it is unnecessarily using extra subjects or participants which can be viewed as unethical. Likewise, if the sample is too small, which it is unlikely to be successful, wherein it also considered as unethical ways of resources. Hey, yung sample yung kanina, nasagot ko natin, ito yung pangalawa. Pag maliit naman, ay, mas maganda hindi ka na gumawa ng research study. Kasi hindi mo na siya makukuha yung accuracy mo ng research mo. Magiging unethical, unethical na yun kasi para ba nagtatapong ka na ng waste of resources na yun. Diba? Baga magiging scrap yan. Kasi syempre hindi mo makikita yung, ano, yung level of significance mo ng research study mo doon sa problem mo. Okay? Now, uh, we have also the sampling basic. Uh, sampling, it is the process of selecting individuals' participation for a research study. Siyempre, sample, kung ano ito ang sample, yun yung mga individuals natin. And the process is sampling of selecting participants. Now, the two basic categories of sampling methods are or also called sampling techniques or sampling procedures. If you have the probability sampling, the, uh, number one, Okay, also the number two, non-probability. Doon muna tayo do sa probability sampling. Okay. Probability sampling, it is the entire population which is known. Each individual in the population has its viable probability selection and sampling, of course, by a random process based on the probabilities. Most likely, itong probability sampling, it is uh, having no bias. Okay? Now, the three important conditions of uh, probability sampling, uh, we have to consider, number one, the exact size of population must be known and it must be possible to list all the individuals. Okay? Now, each individual in the population must have a specified probability of selection. Okay? Hindi natin bias. Kumbaga, they will have a uh, guarantee or a chance to be included in the research study. When a group of individuals are all saying the same probability, the selection process must be unbiased so that all group members have an equal chance of being selected. That must be in a form of random process. Okay? Sa random process yun, yun ang tinatawag naman natin uh, doon sa pagiging unbiased ng selecting of participants, which it is the procedure that produces one outcome from a select set of possible outcomes, the outcome must be unpredictable each time and the process must guarantee that each possible outcome is equally likely to occur. Like a cost, 
Toscoin, di ba? Nakikita mo yung Chacho. Uh, they, they will have the uh, uh, same percentage of being selected from a research study. Eh, hindi mabigat si Cha, hindi mag mabigat si Chu. Kasi pareho lang naman sila na porsyento. Kasi nandun na, 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 na lang sila sa umbrella na yun. Okay? Now, uh, for the probability samples, we do have the learning objectives. They find some simple random sampling, uh, recognize the equipment of personal research effort, and explain its strengths and weaknesses. Also, we do have to describe the four probability sampling methods presented in the book. Other than simple random sampling, uh, we do have stratified random, proportionally strat stratified random, systematic, and cluster. Now, it is to recognize these techniques when they appear in the research reports and explain the strengths and weaknesses of each. Okay. Ngayon, doon naman tayo, patungo tayo sa simple random sampling. This is a sampling technique that each individual in the population has an equal chance of being selected. Equality means that no individual is more likely to be chosen than another. Yan yung sa random process. This is to ensure that the selection procedure cannot discriminate among individuals and thereby result in a non-representative sample. In a simple random, it is most likely to be used in every research study because uh, in a research study, we should consider the uh, of having no bias. Uh, equality for each individual to be selected to prevent that uh, to have no discrimination among individuals. Now, the three steps to follow for the simple random sampling process it is to clearly define the population from which you want to select a sample. Also, list all the members of the population, use a random process to select individuals from the list. The two principal methods of random sampling uh, we do have sampling with the replacement and sampling without replacement. For the sampling with the replacement, the method requires that an individual selected for the sample be recorded as sample member and then returned to the population before the next selection is made. However, the so without replacement amount of sampling, this method removes each selected individual from the population before the next selection is made. Although the probability of being selected changes with each selection. This method guarantees that no individual appears more than once in a single sample. Okay? Uh, usually, ito mas maganda gamitin without replacement kasi uh, they will have a uh, guaranteed participation for each selection. Okay? Now, uh, the strengths and weaknesses of uh, simple random sampling, it is that the selection process is fair and unbiased. And niya, but there is no guarantee that the sample is representative to the population. Okay? Kasi hindi mo pwede sabihin yung, yung, yung result ni learning disability is maging, maging ito na yung uniform or uh, representative na siya to the uh, population of uh, children with special needs. Ganun kasi simple yun. Okay, systematic sampling. It is a type of probability sampling that is very similar to simple random sampling. It begins by listing all the individuals in the population, then randomly picking a start point on the list. It's a start point. Uh, pareho lang, halos pareho lang siya sa 
sa simple random. However, uh, makikita natin systematic, is organized. Kaya kailangan meron siyang uh, starting point, then terminal point. Ganun. Now, the strengths and weaknesses. An easy made of obtaining an essentially random sample. But the selections are not really random or independent. Kasi nga, hindi nga siya, uh, hindi nga siya random. Okay, yun yung weakness niya. Kasi, when you say random, again, uh, they will have a, an equal uh, selection. Di ba? Baga random mo yung kukunin eh. Yung mga participants. Hindi, uh, sabihin natin, akutip ka parang gano'n. Pwede yun yung best, ano, best uh, way to describe yung random. However, dito sa systematic sampling, uh, doon ka mag-upis sa starting point. Eh, paano kunwari? Meron ka 1,000. Tapos kung ka nag sa starting point na list. Tapos na, kukunin mo lang yung 100. How about deny na? May 100. Yun. Yun yung sinasabi natin. Okay? Uh, kaya sinasabi rito, the selections are not really random. Kaya nga systematic siya. Now, dito naman sa stratified random sample. A sample technique that has a goal for a representative sample. That is to ensure each of the different subgroups is adequately represented. Okay? To obtain this kind of sample, it is very important first to identify the specific equal size random samples from each of the three identified groups using the same steps as in simple random sampling. O, kunwari, kukuha ka ng uh, participant sa Arellano. Okay, sa Arellano University, sa undergraduate uh, school. Okay, ngayon, each of the department under the Arellano University, you will uh, select a sample or participants. Ayan, yun yung sinasabi natin na different subgroups. That will represent yung result mo, yung mga sample mo to be pagka uh, to be uh, general okay kasi doon sa sample mo you, you will select a different subgroups that will represent uh, will become or serves as a representative kasi syempre kinonsider mo na yung iba't ibang subgroups ng population mo na yun kinuha mo na yung mga samples doon and ganun ka simple yun Okay, this is to obtain this kind of sample. It is very uh, important mo first to identify the specific equal size. Ayan. Try identify groups and see, using the same steps in simple random sampling. Now, ang strengths and weaknesses nito, it guarantees that each subgroup will have adequate representation. But the overall sample is usually not representative of the population. Siyempre, yung overall sample mo doon sa research study mo, uh, usually, kung same step lang siya ng simple random sample, yung sa overall sample mo, hindi siya usually mo yung representative. Pero, yung uh, it will guarantee that your uh, subgroup will have adequate representation to the population. Okay? Now, doon sa proportionate stratified random sampling, also known as proportionate random sampling, researchers try to improve the correspondence between a sample and population by del deliberately ensuring that the composition of the sample matches the composition of the population. As with a stratified sample, we begin by identifying a set of subgroups or segments in the population. Next, we determine the proportion of the population corresponds to each subgroups. Okay. Finally, a sample is obtained such that the proportion in the sample exactly matches the proportions in overall population. Meaning to say, in the samples mo, it will uh, most likely become proportion to overall population. Makasimple yun. Okay? 
Kasi mag-identify ka ng mga subgroups mo. Yung mga se- sa segment mo sa population. Then you will also consider in, uh, of identifying sa sa sample uh, exactly matches the proportional overall population mo. Ngayon, ano ang strengths nun? And it says, it guarantees that the composition of the sample in terms of the identified strata will perfectly representative of the composition of the population. But some strata may have limited representation in the sample. Usually, the goal of having this kind of uh, technique, sampling technique, is for the sample or the individuals who are being selected in the research study to become representative of the population. Okay? Ngayon, dito naman tayo sa cluster sampling. This type of sampling technique, rather than individuals in the population that are already clustered in a pre-existing groups, and a research can randomly select groups instead of selecting individuals. Ibig sabihin, even sa sampling, ito yung process mo of selecting participants. However, sa population mo, naka-sort naka na yung mga subgroups nun. Okay, kaya siya cluster sampling. Ayun, uh, kung naka-subgroup na siya, naka-sort na, uh, researcher can randomly select groups instead of selecting individuals. Ibig sabihin, uh, instead of samples, doon sa, do, do nga na, doon sa mga sa, uh, subgroup ko. Okay? Ano yung mga karakteristik mo? So, kung iba-iba sila ng karakteristik, naka-cluster na siya into different uh, karakteristik. Yung kasi yung, yung target population mo. Ay, magkaaroon ka ng target, kukuha ka ng target population mo. Instead of selecting individuals, yung, yung subgroup mo na. Okay? Now, the two clear advantages of cluster, uh, cluster sampling. First, it is relatively quick and easy way to obtain a large sample. Second, the measurement of the individuals that can often be done in groups, which can greatly facilitate the entire research project instead of selecting an individual and measuring a single score. The researcher can often test and measure the entire cluster at one time and walk away with 30 scores from a single experimental session. Napakadali ito. Kaya pagka ano, um, uh, usually sa, sa school, sa educational setting, ito kayo nakuha. Kung meron ka ng target na population, may target ka yun na individuals, yung same characteristic, and na-cluster mo na siya, na-sort mo na siya, Mabilis ka ng, ano, yung accessibility mo ito. Pagkapunta mo ron, after 30, ano, uh, single session na makukuha mo na yung sort. Okay, ganun kasimple yun. Kasi syempre, na-sort mo na nga yung subgroup sa yun, yung, yung, yung may pre-existing individuals na ron. Ngayon, dumako naman tayo sa combined strategy sampling. It is simply a form of two or more stock combined sample strategies. Select participant. For example, as a superintendent of schools may first divide this district into regions, for example, north, south, east, and west, which involves stratified sampling from the different regions. The superintendent then may select two third grade classroom, which involves cluster sampling. Yung kasimple yun, yung north, south, east, west, yun yung stratified. Yung cluster naman, yung third grade. Okay? Stratified proportion, ito kasi pareho na doon sa uh, population. Yung sa north, south, east, tapos sa so cluster naman, yun yung Individuals na sinort mo doon sa, uh, sa north, doon sinort, sinort mo rin siya sa south. Okay, nagkaroon ka na ng combined strategy. Kasi ginamit mo na si cluster and stratified proportionate sampling. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, now, the strengths and weaknesses, it is an easy method for obtaining a large, relatively random sample, but the selections are not really random or independent. Yan. Hindi kagaya siya ng simple random. Kasi ang simple random, uh, talagang meron siyang random practice na tinatawag natin. Ngayon, dumako naman tayo sa dan probability sampling. Okay. So, non-probability sampling, the population is not completely known. Individual's probabilities cannot be known. The sampling method is based on factors such as common sense or ease with an effort to maintain representatives and avoid bias. Ayan. Uh, sinasabi lang dito na uh, yung population mo hindi, ta hindi, hindi talaga siya nagre-reflect. Tapos yung individual, yung probabilities uh, cannot be known. The sampling method is based on factors such as uh, kumara, yung, uh, yung availability, uh, yung sinasabi natin dito yung mga SWSS, ay mga survey, pulsation, yan. Diyan tayo kumukuha ng mga samples. Kumari, napaka lang sa recto. Pagka punta mo sa recto, meron kang pinasagutan. Ayun. Ayun na yun. Kasi hindi mo na mga, uh, hindi mo na makakalala yung bibigyan mo ng survey na yun. Hindi, hindi mo naman, uh, yun, yung individual sa yun, samples na yun. Okay? Uh, pero, uh, may effort pa rin siya to maintain the rep representativeness of the sample to the population. And the goal is still uh, there kasi yung bias, to avoid bias yung sa research study. Kasi hindi na siya, ano, hindi na siya maging effective or yung credibility na yung research study mo kung Kung bias siya, ibig sabihin, yung credibility ng research study mo, minamnipulate din na. Yan ang kasunto yun. And um, uh, the most important part or uh, uh, need to consider is yung credibility of the research study. Yun, para maging mataas yung percentage na it is most likely uniform or uniform or Standard to all. Ngayon, uh, we do have convenient sampling and quota sampling sa non-probability. Uh, sa convenient sampling, it is the most commonly used sampling method in behavioral sciences uh, research study. Researchers simply use as participants those individuals who are easy to get. Yan yung sinasabi natin kanina. Pumunta ka sa Quezon City. Ano ba na? Ito yung mga ginagamit ng Philippine Statistics sa OIT. Yan. Pag napunta ka sa PSA, hindi mo na mga ilal yun. Nagbigay ka ng, ng ano, ng, ng survey. Yan. To a common issue. Yan. Yan. Kagaya niya rin sa pagpapatupad natin ng National ID System. Okay, siyempre, ang PSA yung under niya. Under yan ng PSA. Now, uh, before doing so, yung national ID system, they have to consider first the uh, feedback sa population. Doon sa mga tao. Ngayon, uh, they will most likely to use a, this kind of sampling, continuous sampling, Ah, uh, yeah, punta sa ano, no, sa sa Quezon City o send part to sa Quezon City, bibigyan sila ng tire survey for. Ayun, ah, uh, doon na sila magkakamot ng statistics kung doon sa sa Quezon City o sa ilang individuals o ano, 1,000 individuals, 70% ang ano, ang nagsasabi na gusto nila na magkaroon ng national ID system to ensure or to limit the 
the government ID to be used kasi nandun na yung lahat. However, to sa 30% naman, may kita rin sa statistics, uh, ayaw nila kasi for security purposes, kasi siyempre ito yung, mga, uh, ito yung ginagamit ng uh, Amerika, ng ibang bansa. Yan. May kita na yung mga uh, yung SSS, SSL number, yung social security number. And, <coughs> Uh, yung perspective nila ron pa panigurado hindi ano hindi maganda kasi syempre ang isipin nila yung protection noon yan at people are selected on the basis of their availability and willingness to respond uh, example it includes the conducting research with the students from an in the, Introductory psychology class studying the children in a local daycare center. Ayan. Ayan, so strengths and weaknesses naman. It is an easy method for obtaining a sample, but the sample is probably biased. Ayan. Bakit? Misa uh, kasi, yun nga, yung sa daycare center. Pwede nga ang, ang, when we say bias dito, yung process mo ng pagkuha. Ay, hindi yung, hindi yung mismong tao. Ang, yung process mo ng pagkuha ng no, tao. Yan yung kasi ito yun. Okay? Magkaiba yung sinasabi natin na yung binigyan mo ng survey si ano si special needs tapos si sa regular yun mabibigay yun kasi bias ka do sa something bias pero yung selecting something bias uh, selecting something bias dito na pumapasok yung tagi bias niya yeah. okay ko ata sampling one method for controlling the composition of a convenient sample is to use some of the same techniques that are used for probability sampling in the same way that we use stratified sampling to ensure that subgroups are equally representative in a convenience sample. Uh, ito yung quota sam uh, sampling. For example, researcher can guarantee for groups of boys and girls in a sample of 30 preschool children by establishing quotas from the number of uh, individuals to be selected from each subgroups rather than simply taking the first 30 children, okay, regardless of gender, who agree to participate. You impose quota of 15 girls and 15 boys. And kaya siya, quota something. Kasi you are establishing a certain numbers. Kaya yun yung quota mo, yung target mo lang ng participants. However, the strengths and weaknesses of this kind of something to do. It allows sa researchers to control the composition of a convenient sample. Yun yun, pinakontrol mo. But, but the sample probably is bias. Yan. Kasi again, uh, paano yung the rest, yung na, na remaining? Diba? Yung kasimple yun. So wala nga ang random process. Ito yun, pumapasok naman si random process, kaya siya bias. Okay, walang random process. And that's the end of my report. And I hope that, uh, yun, yun tayong learning for today. And thank you. Sana ito yung maging way to, ito, kasi most, mostly ito yung hindi po tayo nahihirapan when it comes to uh, doing research study. Sana merong magandang, ano, uh, na visualize kayo on doing ayan, sa research work natin. Thank you. And God bless. Keep safe.